So let me start by thanking everyone for finding time to join yet another telecon. We have one hour allocated. Maybe we don't have to go for an hour, we'll see. But there are some uh, decisions to be made today about some dates for workshops and so on. So I put few links just to have it handy if you need it for some of the more important documents. So we have our one single starting point place for SCOC, then uh, the report by Lynn and others for the 2020 simulation says PSTN 51. We have our old COSEP paper, which is also on Astro PH. This is GitHub link. And then we have our one page timeline for the SCOG deliberation. So this link, and we may, need, we may want to change it. We'll talk about that later. So I just wanted to remind you of some uh, basic truths in this process of optimizing cadence and making the decision how to start the survey in two to three years. First of all, we cannot get rid of any of the four main science teams that we used to get community excited about LSST and Rubin Observatory and that we used to get agencies to fund us. So we cannot just decide overnight that solar system is not important anymore, for example, or that Milky Way galactic plane is not important. So we have to, to optimize all of them simultaneously at the system level. And basically, Andy Connolly and Phil Marshall summarized that nicely, that we are not trying to maximize happiness, we are trying to minimize unhappiness. In other words, we will try to optimize all the science teams we have, but this cannot be done at the, ex at the major expense of some other science team. And a good example is supernovae that have both astrophysical and cosmological importance. And there are ways we could increase supernovae yield by 50%, but if that would also mean that we are killing half of the asteroid population, that would be something that we would not be inclined to do. So I think Phil is also the author of this approach, Cadence Diplomacy. Dave Monet used to predict cadence wars for LSST, but then Phil Marshall came up with this idea of cadence diplomacy. So that's basically what we want SCOC to do. So all people who sit on SCOC, 11 people, they do not represent their science collaborations. I believe all of them are members of science collaborations, but they, they are not representatives of those. They are, their work is to optimize the global scientific productivity of the LSST at the system level and not to fight for their own science collaboration. So if they go back and you are unhappy with them, this, this is in their charge. So if you get mad at Colin for not advocating for galactic plane, then it's not his fault. Also, we want this process to be very open, very transparent. We don't want to be a smoky room and then we will declare that we chose the final cadence after some white smoke comes out of the chimney. We want that our science collaborations to be fully engaged in this process. So the SCOC members will be actively seeking input and advice from all the members of scientific community from science collaborations, but also from other people that they meet, may meet at AAS meetings or wherever. And there will be no secrets. All the information we are gathering is free to be shared. And so the way I think of this whole process is that given the same information that we are collecting for SCOC members. If we chose 10 other people, 11 other people, they would arrive to the same conclusions and recommendations, ideally speaking. Of course, there is some astropolitics involved. There will be relative weightings of the four science teams. And so everybody will have to be very wise. But ideally, it would be great if it could be something that is repeatable in a sense. So how shall we get there? 
So the idea is to have two phases. Right now, we have many different families. In that long report, 80 pages that Lynn and Peter wrote, there are fundamentally different ways of executing survey. Maybe not fundamentally different. They are all related to our baseline cadence. But among themselves, they approach the problem from different angles. So we would like to settle on an overall family by the end of the next year, which means we would like to know what do we want to do about rolling cadence. We would like to know the footprints, more or less, the list of mini surveys. We would like to know where DDFs are. And once we have this strategy for starting the survey, then we will optimize it, basically micro-optimize it by varying quantitative knobs, like exposure time, now we understand the system better. So, for example, we have measurements of the readout noise for all 3,024 amps in the camera. So, we understand that with U-band, we should go with longer exposures. But these are micro-optimizations that we will do in phase two. Now, in phase one, it's almost like a qualitative statement, which of these families we want to pursue further. And because we want to have open communication channels between the SCOC members and science collaborations, we decided that we probably need three workshops to accomplish this. So the first one that we need to talk about today was nominally scheduled for November. It did include some delay, I think three months delay compared to the original schedule, three months delay due to COVID. But at that time, we did not predict that COVID would still be going strong by the end of this year. And I think that's now pretty obvious. So we may want to reconsider timing of that workshop because science collaboration chairs are reporting that everybody is super busy. And there are some other deadlines in November that came from the commissioning team. So there were concrete proposals to relax this schedule. And given that the whole uh, the full project schedule will be delayed by at least nine months and most likely 12 months. In the best case scenario, we, we can further relax our schedule by a few months without having any impact on, on the project. And so at this first workshop, we want to enable the SCOP to receive input from science collaborations. Basically, we want to announce a call for white papers that will be much more modest than the original white papers that led to this round of cadence simulations. But if we want them to be much shorter and more specific, more to the point, basically we want to find out all the reasons why some science collaboration would not like any of the simulations we have in that log list. If there is a reason to stop simulating them because it kills particular science, particular science teams, we want to find out that sooner rather than later so that we can modify our simulations plan. And so then in the second workshop, once the SO, uh, SCOC SCOC has proposal for their final decision for this family of cadences, we would like to have another conversation with all the stakeholders before we make it official, official recommendation to the survey director. And then we'll play by ear, we'll see if we need another third workshop to talk about the fine tuning of that recommended strategy. At that time, we'll also understand, hopefully understand better when we would start the survey and how much we accomplished in commissioning. So we will have much more information for optimization of early science. And early science is defined as all the science we would produce prior to data release one. And it's supposed to ensure that once we go into operations that we are visible to the agencies and to everyone else, as well as make up for some observing time that we hope, hoped we would have in commissioning, but it now looks like we will not. And I'm sure most of you are familiar with those surveys that Chuck and his team wanted to execute but now, now they're getting thinner and thinner. So at this point, these are the top questions that I think you all already saw from your liaisons. 
So first of all, we want to find out if any of those families kill your particular science. If this is the case, then there is no point in further simulating those, uh, those strategies. Also, we would like to know if we were successful in modifications. Then we want to know if you need any help with math. And then I'll show you in a moment our suggestion for, for Stroman plan for the November workshop. And this is where we need your feedback today that we have you all on this telecom. So after some conversation by the SCOP members, we decided that we probably are looking at about two days workshop, four, day, four hours each day. Originally, we were hoping for the week of November 16 to 20. That's a month from now. So that doesn't give us a lot of time. But we could perhaps move it to the second week of December or maybe the second half of January. And that's something I would like to hear today from everyone on call, both the SCOP members and science collaboration chairs. What should we choose for the date of that workshop? And just to give you an idea of what we have on our mind for the agenda for these two times, two hours per block, two days, so four hours each day. The first day we would have possibly pre-recorded talks. We also heard from people that Nobody will view these talks prior to the meeting, so maybe we should do it in real time. That's still open question. So we would recap the introduction to the scheduler and math. So what exactly we can and cannot simulate with this tool, how to use math, and then there are lots of math outputs that Lynn and Peter are regularly pr producing. So we would give you a hands-on tour how to interpret them. There are lots and lots of outputs, and if you never looked at them, it can be, it can turn you off from ever looking at them again. But indeed, they are rich in information. There are lots of metrics that are being computed. Then there is this huge report, 80 pages, where we wanted to put all the relevant technical details about these new families. But then reality is that Monster is 80 pages long and nobody or almost Anyone has time now to sit down and go and read 80 pages. Even I read it only twice. So I think Peter and Lynn are the only people who read it more than twice. And then second day, we would focus on the principal open cadence questions, such as those. Is your science killed by any of the simulations? Shall we do two filters per pair of visits or same filter or etc.? And then we will talk about the remainder of the process for the scope to reach decisions and recommendations, including this call for white papers that, that Scott proposed and the deadline for submitting them. And so just, uh, I think this is my last slide. What do we have on mind for these white papers? So now we have this huge report and we want to channel somehow everything that people discover quantitatively by analyzing either simulations themselves or maybe looking at math outputs and deciding that something's bad for their science. So we want to collect that feedback. And again, the Stroman timeline says we should have the final recommendation by the end of the next calendar year. And so based on that, it sounds like March 1 might be reasonable deadline for submitting these white papers. Again, they're supposed to be very short, one to two pages with very specific technical feedback. It is not going to be as long as white papers that were submitted last time with proposals for strategies. So that's where we come from. And I'd like now to stop and ask people for comments. And before we go there, there was a link. There we go, it's uh, Rachel already posted it. I would invite everyone to use the document to record what we are talking about. And especially if people have specific comments, it would be great if you could type it yourself in the doc because I cannot type that fast and, and may pay attention to what's going on at the same time. So we can start with general comments or we can start with the specific comments about workshop and then work backwards. And now I'm seeing there is a lot of 
I have to take a quick look at the chat. So November, no, okay. Lynn has specific questions. Nice to give. Okay, 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 uh -huh. okay, yes. Okay, I mean, we can push in. We are here today to decide how we want to push these dates around. So we can do whatever we please, as long as it fits in this overall plan that we have. And given that we have 20 people on the call, I would propose that you just type your name if you want to make a comment. Just go to chat and we'll follow, we'll follow the order of names in the chat. Just type your name. Otherwise, it becomes very hard to, to see who raised their hand and some people that are not on video. So we already have two. Excellent. So we'll start with Rachel. Rachel Street and go with Michelle. Thank you. So to get the ball rolling on the date of the next work, the first workshop, um, mid-November is kind of a tight deadline for uh, those of us who are really just spinning up efforts to review in detail the, the FCOC report, which is very, very good, very informative, and uh, to spin up all the, the metric evaluation effort. Um, you mentioned alternative dates in mid-December, and I wanted to point out that, unfortunately, the mid-December date clashes directly with SPIE, uh, which I, for one, will be obliged to attend. So um, that's a bit tricky. Late January, on the other hand, is definitely a goer, but that might be a little bit too late for your, the rest of your timeline. But it would be good to hear from other people on that score. I agree. Thank you for this comment. Next is Michelle. Hello. Um, so I'm standing in for Meg Schwam today. For uh, so you don't normally hear from me on this one. Um, just to, as someone new to this process, I'm finding that as one of the people who um, helped contribute to a number of white papers that went in initially, there hasn't been a lot of loop closure on how that was incorporated in the first place, um, and if we're now asking the community to write, sit down and do another batch of white papers. It's going to be a lot easier to solicit white papers from people if they feel the previous white papers have been acted on. Even if it's at the level of a very short email going, hi, we acted on your um, request and this is where you can find the simulation that uh, um, directly engages with what you proposed. Thanks. You know, the SSOC. Thank you for this comment. Uh, Lynn will have to remind me, but I recall we had similar conversation with Michael Strauss about that. So white papers went to the Science Advisory Committee chaired by Michael Strauss. So they went through all of them. SAC did most of work to read them and to collate them into actionable proposals Then they delivered to Lynn and Peter. So it would be, so Lynn and Peter never received recommendations based on individual papers. It was, they, uh, it was the SAC that collated all the ideas and, and formed actionable proposal, but I may be misremembering. So Lynn is on, on a call. Lynn, can you comment on this too? Um, well, certainly we did read all the, the white papers as well, but yes, you're right. As far as the, we, we were not acting on the white papers directly. The white papers went to the SAC who came back to us with recommendations based on um, what they were seeing. Uh, sometimes it was across several white papers and sometimes it was um, things that came directly from the, a white paper. Um, some of the things in the white papers were definitely said we don't think we want want to do this. Um, there were a couple that asked for a lot of time, for example. And I think we were a little bit unsure, or maybe not quite, it, it was not exactly obvious what to do, from my point of view anyway, in terms of writing to the individual white paper authors and saying, um, actually, we don't think we can do anything for this. So thank you for submitting but we're 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 take, we're in the in the process of going through these white papers. We've already made some first cuts, and this wasn't one of them. And maybe we could just say that you know um, 
this is these are some simulations that are close to what you asked for, but not not exactly it. We didn't simulate your thing exactly because there were very few papers that came in um, with a very specific suggestion that was that were implemented exactly. Some were, I mean, you know, we we've looked at the um, change to the YFAST D proposal or footprint. So it sounds, it sounds like you and I need to talk to Michael Strauss and see how we could respond to, to submitters of those white papers. So at the very least, just being polite, it would be nice to send them email and say, thank you for contributing to the next round of simulations, but we can be more informative. So yeah, let's I mean, just put this down. We did write Go back ahead. to say we had acknowledged that we had received everybody's white paper and we, we wrote an acknowledgement um, thank you for sending your white paper. And so we did do that and we did acknowledge the white papers at the end of the SAC report. Um, yeah, we, we, we didn't go the extra step of saying, here is the simulations that reflect some of the input from your white paper. Right, now that we want to extract more work, I think Michelle's proposal is excellent that we write again to these people and say, hey, we are here. This is what we did with your idea, but can you now take another look, something like this. So let's put this down as an action item for the three of us. And then we could go back to, oh, Rachel wants yeah. to say uh, something. Else. Sorry, yeah, if, if I might um, just follow up to that. Yeah, I, I think you folks have done a ton of work uh, um, simulating all of this. And uh, in some ways, what I want is the community to actually fully appreciate all of that work that went into running those simulations. And uh, I think that's the, that's the, the final step of, of engagement closure that would work. And if I can also say for, um, on behalf of the Southern Hemisphere folks, if you're pushing to late January, um, that will disengage the LSST Asia component um, who have uh, holidays in the, um, the, the summer holiday period falls in the um, December, January timeframe. So you'll have trouble getting a lot of engagement out of people if you put it um, in mid-January, but if you put it in early February, you'll start to get us back again. And, and does December rule that out too? We all leave by December 18th. Okay. It's, it's, think of us as being like the French, we vanish for a month. <laughs> I, I so have... never... Go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say, I, I, I might, I'm currently expecting to have some conflicts with December, so I, I'm not super keen on December either. But, but there's yeah, still. It will be hard to please everyone, but the only solution right now for pleasing everyone is to go all the way to February. Now, this may be too long. So if we stick to the end of December and we go to February, maybe if we gave less time to people to write those two pages and we, we don't expect them to sit on it for three, four months, but rather maybe a month or two, two months. So I just want to say before we are done today, we need to decide, <laughs> but let's listen to other people who want to say something we have. Rachel S and then Mansi and then Lynn and then Peregrine. Thanks. So I wanted to pick up on um, the idea of responding to all of the authors of the key of the original white papers and endorse that strongly because I get the impression from talking to some of the TBS white paper authors that uh, there may have been some misapprehensions in when they originally submitted it. So what um, there may be some flexibility in what they proposed in the sense that if you come back and say, we didn't include this in the simulation because X or it was impractical, they may well come back to you with a more reasonable proposition um, and that that may actually be a more a valuable way to go forward. So even if it does is the worst case scenario for the author, it may well lead to a productive conversation. Thank you, Rachel. And the second point, just to point out, oh, even sorry. if you, sorry, but if you shift the, 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 the uh, date of the workshop in December, even just a few days, um, that would actually be helpful. So it may not need to be such a major shift as you're thinking. In December, except I would lose Lynn. 
<laughs> Lynn, you said um, you can't do December. Well, if we, if we, once we come up with some dates, I can check what my schedule is actually like. It's just- Yeah, we, get, we have opportunity to shift it by a week in December and then the following week we hit holiday season. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think, I mean, I think we can probably work something out. It's just that I'm likely to be moving during December. Uh, let's hear from others. We have Mansi waiting. I just wanted to point out that I think the November workshop where it requires the least amount of work before in preparation by the community to join, right? It's sort of just to get the ball rolling on what the white people that we are looking for, what type of input we're looking for by March 1st. So I think maximizing the time that people have to digest what they hear at the November workshop and develop whatever the missing metrics is, identify the big, big problems right before zooming into the details um, for their white paper would be most useful. So I think it's okay to push, you know, late November to early December, but, but I wouldn't push any further than that because um, that would give people too little time to write good white papers. And that white paper input that we get from the community is going to be valuable uh, to make decisions that are difficult to make downstream, right? So I think we want to maximize the amount of time the community has to prepare those white papers. So if, you're, if you still want to get white papers by March 1st, so we can try to have another workshop in the fall and try to make a decision by December, I, I don't think we have much flexibility with this November workshop date, maybe a couple of weeks but not much more than that, right? And that can be whatever a doodle or a um, when is good poll. But um, but I think the link to January, I think would just push everything, everything back. Yeah, I kind of agree. I'm looking at the calendar now for December and this week 14 to 18, two days during that week becomes more and more attractive. But let's hear uh, from the others who was next on the list. Aprajita, did you want to say something or you just wrote what you wanted to say and we can continue down the list? Uh, she, she can't say anything, I think. Oh, okay. okay. Then we are back uh, to Lynn and Greg Green. Um, I just wanted to, to see if we wanted to revisit the format at all. Um, if the if part of the problem is getting two days where everybody can be there, and part of the problem is that people won't watch videos ahead of time, um, and part of the problem is that a lot of the material that we've talked about presenting to me it comes across as very non-interactive, and in which case I don't. If we have schedule problems and the material is non-interactive, why why do we? Is it, does it make sense to think about going away from two days next to each other? Um, I, don't, I, I don't know. I mean, I do get the appeal of saying like, hey, let's do two days. Everybody can, can come and focus on that and we'll present everything in, in one go. Um, so if people want to stick with that, that's fine. It's just, we are running up against these other problems. And if we say, oh, everything will be recorded, people are going to fall back in the same thing of saying I'm busy I can't go I'll watch the recording and if we're saying people don't watch recordings then we have this problem again so I don't know at some point this is just something we might want to grapple with and and maybe there's a way we can improve on all of it by having maybe if we did like sort of instead of two days in a that were so solid we could like have an hour um on several different days with a short discussion period afterwards? I, I don't know. I don't know if there's a better way. That's to a very it. good question. And hopefully we can get some feedback on that too today. So let's try to be right. the end and go to Peregrine uh, and then. Yeah, just a, just a very quick question. Um, maybe I just missed it. But yeah, what was the reason that we aren't looking for earlier in December than the week of the 14th? I didn't catch the question. Can you repeat? What is the reason for what? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. The question is, what is the reason that you weren't considering earlier in December? Basically, moving it earlier by a week or two. What was the schedule? Uh, the, 
the week that we proposed is the week of SPIE. There is conflict. That right, Rachel but, but actually going earlier. Even earlier in December. Uh, yeah. You mean uh, December 1st to 4th? I right. don't have any reason why. I thought 7 to 11 was sufficiently different from November that it makes sense to move it. But yes, there is this week in the middle to early, first week in December. Okay. Rachel M. Thanks. Um, so I had two, two somewhat different comments. The first one just about the timing and concerns about early. I did kind of want to say something related to, to what Mansi said. I felt that um, when people hear workshop and white paper, they might think something similar in scope to the previous white paper call where people were just really proposing a lot of very different things related to everything from, you know, big picture, what does the, what's the area look like, you know, rolling kittens versus not. So like this relevant to this question of like families of cadences. And then like people were also, you know, brainstorming about more like detail things. And if I've understood what you're saying correctly, the first workshop, <clears throat> sorry, this workshop is meant to feed into the phase one of the committee's work. So setting, settling on like a strategy or a family simulation. So, so you're not asking people to think about the full like scope of all possible observing strategy questions. So I guess what I'm trying to say is just, I think if it does need to be a little bit earlier and you can provide them with a very clear, like here is the limited set of, you know, questions, like I think that that may be doable. Um, yes, you, you understood it correctly. It is uh, very specific feedback about the simulations that exist, the big picture view and and starting from scratch, that train has left the station. We, that was the last call for white papers. We collected ideas, we implemented them. Now we want to see if there are, for example, unanticipated problems with some of these ideas for some other collaborations or other science teams yeah. that they didn't know about. So now we want to go through this list and say, okay, DESC proposed this modification. It works great but they killed half the solar system. So we want to hear that back from the solar system people or the other way around. Um, yes, I, but even there I thought, and again, please correct me if I'm wrong, like the family of, you know, like all the, the full set of simulations that were released include both the big picture changes, like, you know, Des suggested this footprint shift or, you know, this science collaboration suggested this type of rolling cadence. And I thought it also includes some like smaller scale fine tuning changes. So I, I guess what I'm trying to say is just when getting people to think about this workshop, focusing them on a set of high level questions that might not require them to feel like they have to understand like all of the 80 page report and all of the simulations. Right, understood. Yeah, so the purpose, partially the purpose of the workshop is to talk exactly about what would be in white papers so that people understand what is expected from them. Okay. Including having cheat sheet for the big report that SCOC members already proposed and to go through the list of top questions that Lynn and Peter need to have answered so they can proceed with another round of simulations. Great. Okay. Because that might make it feel a little more um, approachable to people if the whole point of the workshop is to get them oriented on exactly. a question. Yeah. So um, we don't expect people to do anything prior to this workshop. Okay. And my second point was just going to be that a lot of dates have been thrown around and I don't know about the others, but I've been thinking like, oh, I know of this conflict for this one. I know of this conflict for this one. And I, I am obviously not going to like speak up individually about every single one. Would it be useful if we were to put in the notes, the set of known conflicts so that we can do this asynchronously, but you have something at the end. That of would be great. That would be great. We will not be able to find a date without conflicts. We'll have oh, to. Not, no, but you should, but that way you'll at least know what conflicts there are and what choices you can. Yes, make. yes, I agree. That'd be great. If someone is aware of some conflict like this problem with, uh, with Southern Hemisphere and 
summer there. Yeah, we should know about it. Let's uh, run through the list. We are now at Rene. Uh, hi, yeah, I just wanted to just come back a little bit to uh, Lynn's comment about doing stuff asynchronously. And I think it would really work if we did a combination. If we said to people, here are a bunch of pre recorded um, uh, tutorials on the tools and the things that you might need, and maybe even an int intro to the straw person so that people can watch that video, watch those videos in the week and running up to the meeting asynchronously, and then have, you know, a shorter meeting, like a day where we say to people, all of the sessions are going to be discussion sessions so that it's super useful, super important to be online, you know, not that, not all of your day. Um, I think that would be, you know, the best combination so that people essentially you know, we can flip the classroom and give people homework or pre-reading so that by the time they arrive, even though they haven't done the like analysis, they really know the questions that they want to ask and how to engage with the straw person. So. Yeah, that was the original idea, idea of having these pre-recorded things, but then we also heard people will not view them, so. But I think if people know, if people know that the, the, that there are going to be sessions that are, you know, super engaged, maybe, I don't know, I'm still hopeful that they will do it rather than showing up and saying, look, I haven't watched anything. I don't know what's going on. Um. All right, let's, let's uh, move to Knut. Yeah, um, uh, I'd just like to second Rachel M's uh, suggestion of focusing on the few key big questions, uh, the early ones, sort of the big levers. And I think what Lynn wrote in her, her email, which, which I haven't uh, entirely digested but but looks uh, um, very good um, sort of outlines uh, what um, what some of those big questions or big levers are so the two by 15 versus one by 30 you know the pairs and same filter different filters in the footprint um, and if, if we can structure the workshop to try to get input uh, on those questions then um, then I think yeah having a workshop that comes up pretty quickly might might not be uh, so unreasonable. Um, I would think for an overall goal, maybe for the the white paper contributors, is to uh, maybe start constructing a Jupyter notebook that um, uh, it, maybe a little it could start simple, like at the um, at the flat iron workshop. Uh, Lynn came up with a structure for a very basic notebook to explore some trades. Um, and if uh, that didn't really even involve uh, you know, the details of math. Uh, but if we had a notebook like that, that was kind of tuned to each, each science case um, produced in white papers, then one could build that into a notebook that would include the math metrics. Uh, but it might be enough to have something simple to address these basic first questions. Thank you, Kanut. And Renee again. Um, yeah, I just wanted to uh, state, you know, with uh, chatting to some folks, we we developed this um, straw person set of questions, and I wonder if it would be useful to also kind of iterate on those to see, in addition to Lynn's, you know, major direction planning, to see if we can help the members of the science collaborations really engage um, in a in very simple, like very simple yes, no, this is going to work uh, question. So I can share the Google Doc. I don't know if that's appropriate now, Jaco, or? Um, yeah, that'd be great. Okay. I okay. did not share it with science collaboration chairs, but. Okay, uh, great. I, I wanted to, to have a round of discussions with Scott members, but I think it's completely fine to share it. Okay, sorry, I didn't mean to jump the gun. I'm happy to wait if you think. No, that's fine, that's fine. Okay. No, no. Okay, so I'm. Um, uh, it will nicely illustrate what kind of questions we are trying to ask. Yeah, and it would be super useful if folks, you know, on the call can, uh, you know, obviously this, this, these are the things that we've been iterating on together. Um, but then it may be that we want to either add more questions or that you think you're not entirely sure what the question is asking or if you could answer it. And so, um, uh, I think the, the more practical and the more um, direct we can be to people for the meeting that we can start having these discussions and it may come out that people don't know what they need to answer these. And I think that's one of the things we want uh, to get at right as early as possible. Yeah. I agree. 
Before we go to Meg, Rachel had a question. Can we share this with our science collaborations? Uh, I think yes, except for the caveat that we are not done yet with the document. We just started it. So I thought we would have another round of discussions with Lynn and Peter and with SCOC members and then add more examples. So maybe it's premature to send it, but there is nothing secret in it if you think you want to give them preview of what to expect. Yeah, go ahead. Meg. Sorry, we double booked as usual um, in this time slot. Um, I guess one of my concerns about is that when everyone goes, going to watch lots of videos. I know a lot of people that did not watch the PCW videos at all. And all they watched was on the, the PCW itself. And, it, and so my concern is that you're going to make all these videos and you're going to get a bunch of people that are not ready to dive in and that we're going to get the same core people who basically have been looking at this who are able to talk about it and that that's one not going to let people in who are junior that will be influenced by this kid decision make it and so i just would like to make sure we've got balance there um in that because my concern is you make a half an hour video i can't get you know college kids to watch a 20 minute video about how to do their lab that tells them exact all the answers to half the, half the lab uh, to do um, and that, again, I saw that with the PCW. So, you know, I guess is what I'm, I guess I'm wondering is, are we asking for high level goals to come out of this workshop in the sense of those big questions that Lynn's asking? Because I think when I look at what Renee has, that's very, some of it's very specific. And I worry that we wouldn't get that achieved out of this workshop or you'd have to organize it differently to get that, like make it longer right? or provide ho more homework, you know, at an earlier date to get people up to speed on that. But I think, I think that's, that's the I feedback I feel like I'm getting from, from people is yeah. that they're like, I haven't read this 85 page document. I don't know anything. Whatever you wrote is good. Go off. I understand. Right. But uh, this workshop cannot be for everyone. I see it as providing information to people who care about observing strategy and who care about how we will get to the final decision. This that's is not for thousands. It's not for all thousand members of our science collaboration. That's fine, but I think from what I can read from all of the it's, from all of the science collaboration the feedback to liaison has been has that very few people have engaged in this. Some collaborations do, but most that are not funded or have significant funded contingent have not engaged, and it's a very small core of them. And so my concern is, you will have people then still feel like the decision was made without really explaining it to, every, to a number, and that they won't feel part of it. So I get the point, we shouldn't make this so that it's like the PCW, but I think is if you don't get more than just the leadership of each science collaboration engaged, or a few more, we've failed at making this again open. And it's just as closed door as us doing it without asking for feedback. So I don't know if there's balance, but I guess maybe stating exactly what the goals are of this workshop. So people attending know exactly what we think we're getting out of it. Like again, setting the expectations. So being very clear, these are exactly what we want out of this. Um, in the advertisement maybe would help. But right now I think is that's my concern is that, you know, at the end of the day when this is advertised, everybody knows what, what's going in, what the aim is to come out with it. Definitely, but we cannot advertise it without knowing when it will happen. So we are not going home until we have date that we agreed upon or algorithm by which we will select it. <laughs> so Rachel S and then Lynn and then we have to decide about what to do about the timing of the first workshop. Thank you. I wanted to emphasize that I think the SCs have a, a strong role, um, as Meg said, in organizing the community to actually deal with this pre-recorded material. But I don't think it's impossible that we can get the community to actually engage and, and view it in advance. And maybe what we need to do is organize almost like movie showings. We say, right, there will be a 2 p.m. showing of your favorite pre-recorded movie of the SCOC material uh, on this date and we have it at different time zones so uh, different times so it's helpful for different time zones but we make it a, an event in the SCO calendar and the SCs can help organize interested people from our science collaborations to make sure that they're there uh, and but again, you know, give us a, a couple of weeks warning so that we can get the right people and make sure that they're there and make sure that they see it. Um, and I feel like we can get that to happen. I don't know how the other SC leads feel about it, but I feel like that could work for TBS. 
Yeah, we definitely cannot answer all these questions today, but you science collaboration chairs have your own meetings. So hopefully you will have further discussions and help us converge with these ideas. Uh, Graham Smith wants to say something. Oh no, Len, I'm skip Len. Len, let's uh, let's try to spend just a few more minutes, and then we need to converge with the dates. Yeah, I was just going to say. I think one of the the problems is that there is a lot of material. Not everybody cares about all of the material. So this was actually one of the things I liked about pre-recorded stuff is we could split it up into more targeted audience sort of bites and then people could just look at that presumably if somebody is interested in something they are more likely to watch it and if they feel like it's relevant to them um so that was what i was kind of one reason why i'm pushing for like i think pre-recorded is nice it might also mean that we don't need to have as much time where we are all together watching stuff that's maybe not relevant for everybody Perhaps you should have something like TikTok videos, one minute and you make one point and then you choose any video you want. Uh, Graham Smith and then Jay, no, Jay sent. Okay, we could do that. So, who's so that? Oh, go ahead, please. Sure. I just have a question um, which may influence the um, uh, the approach in terms of you know the workshop um, design or even necessity. Um, it seems a motivation for getting the sort of representatives from different science collaborations sort of in the room to have a joint workshop is strong if you need um, if you need interaction between the site between the representatives of the science collaboration on the other hand if you're looking for if the workshop is a vehicle for getting input from each of the um, science collaborations to the SCOC or briefing each science collaboration then you don't necessarily need everyone in the room for a workshop and perhaps all of these different constraints and uh, maybe different styles in terms of people want to watch videos or they want to uh, live talks would be removed if you then ha if instead of a workshop you have um what do we have eight science collaborations so maybe you have eight shorter sessions uh where the uh, where you meet with specific with nominated specific representatives of each science collaboration there may be a simple answer to the question which means that most of what i've just said is not useful but if you don't need us to interact if it's, if the science collaborations don't need to interact in this, with each other in this workshop then maybe it's that's a very good question that you raised so the the need to have one-on-one -on -one with science collaborations we tried to fill with naming liaisons for each science collaboration and indeed workshop workshop was meant more as an opportunity for people from all science collaborations who care about cadence to talk to each other now whether that is really necessary or not I don't know, but it was very strong suggestion made by Scott that we should have such a workshop where Scott members could interact with all the science collaborations. I invite Scott members if they want to comment on how strongly they feel about this workshop too. Rachel, Kanut. Uh, so first off I, I think that's a very strong suggestion and i can suggest maybe uh rather than thinking about science uh collaboration specifically maybe we can consider uh topical domains for example galactic plane science has a lot of overlap between tvs and stars milky way and local volume and uh, we have liaisons working between our science collaborations but not necessarily directly to the SCOC. So we could considerably have like a, a targeted workshop for us. Thank you, Rachel. Janut? Yeah, so, so um, I, I mean, I think the, one of the goals of the workshop, right, is to, is to equip people with the, the tools and the confidence to, to come up with, you know, quantitative metrics that they can apply to the simulations 
and an interactive workshop I think is is really important for doing that. Uh, just thinking of the flat iron workshop uh, where getting people in a room and showing you know what you were comfortable with and what you weren't was a really way good way to socialize the information. Thank you, Rachel. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to say, I do think it will likely be valuable to, you know, at some point within that workshop to have some time focused within broader science areas, like maybe some, you know, time domain sci or transient science, you know, variable objects, static sky, broad categories. Um, but I definitely think that I see a very strong value in having, you know, the science collaboration members, people who are coding up metrics, you know, directly engaging with each other across science collaboration. So I just wanted to say I, I very much agree with the SCOC members who originally suggested that getting those people in a room together and not just having the, you know, the committee itself and, and the liaisons talking uh, would be profitable. Thank you, Rachel. So we have six minutes left. We need to decide what is the next step. So based on all the comments about timing, it looks like with the new information that SPI is actually 14 to 18, it looks like the optimal week still would be two days during December 7 to 11. It seems that November is too close and we could benefit from few extra weeks. So I propose that we select two days. I'll talk to Lynn. I must have Lynn available. <laughs> and then we'll just then inform the entire SCOC and science collaboration chairs. And you'll have yet another chance to say, to veto basically and say, no, that's super bad. But again, remember, we can't find perfect solution. But based on telecon today, it seems that February is just too far out and that we should postpone no more than a few weeks. So given holiday season and SPI, the most we can postpone is the week of 7 to 11. And your points about have, that we need to describe very precisely what is supposed to be achieved by this workshop, that's well taken. We already have some drafts. So on time scale of a few days, we will circulate again, both to, to the SCOC members and science collaboration chairs. We'll send you draft for comments before we distribute it for wide circulation. Does that sound like good plan to proceed? Do you have any comments or additional things? Nobody's screaming at me. Have a comment in the chat. Oh, okay, my chat moved up. So you could consider the week before first week of December if that works for Len. Yes, I'll, I have, I'll, Lynn and I will continue with this telecom once we are on the full hour and we'll talk details. Okay, we already now know it's this sprint. Okay, <laughs> can't make everyone happy. So, Jelka, can I just check? So the point, the way I understood this discussion, the point of the workshop is to give the whole community that's interested in cadence an opportunity to get more familiar with the metrics, but also the general uh, document and introduce, or let's say reintroduce the community to the status. Then during this discussion, there were also um, comments on kind of either topic or science collaboration specific follow up, which can happen presumably after this initial introductory workshop. And then there's the actual deadline, which as far as I understood from what you said, you would prefer it not to be pushed from early March. Is that a fair summary of what the SCOC wants to happen over the next six months? I believe so. Modulo that if push comes to shove, we could push March one by week, two, three weeks, not many months, but given that we moved workshop a little bit, we could move that deadline a little bit. But conceptually, yes, that's exactly what we want to happen. Okay. So we are aiming for 
for people who are already deeply vested in cadence optimization. It's not just for random people from thousand people in science collaborations. This should go now one level up compared to PCW workshop. This is now for people who care more. Yeah. And it's driven by, by the SCOC members and, and their deliberations. Okay, thank you. Again, if you have any additional comments, if something comes to your mind later, you can either add it to this Google Doc. Thank you, whoever was writing in Google Doc all these comments, thank you so much. It, it's very useful. So you can either go to this doc or send email to, if it's more technical, to Lynn, Peter and me or, or anything else. You can go to community and general comments of general importance can go to community.lsst.org. Jelke, there's another couple of comments on, on November dates still maybe should be considered. So I think someone made the suggestion that we put our preferences within the Google Doc over by tomorrow or something so you can converge on a date. That would be great too. If you have strong opinion, either way, please do add it to the document. And I see Hiranya wants to say something. Um, I guess the time is really up, so I don't want to take up time, but I don't quite understand why we can't have it in November, given that the science collaborations are not actually expected to do anything before this workshop, except maybe watch some short pre-recorded materials. The and reason I, was that mm. some other things science collaborations need to deliver. Meg is usually very vocal about that, and they have few deadlines in November that were in conflict with this plan from commissioning team. Meg, do you want to say it? In oh, no, okay. I don't want to reopen that, that discussion. Okay. Okay. It's December 4th, I think, is when the commissioning is due, and so I think that was that plus uh, November, first week of November starts the CEC review. So you'll be asking a lot of science collaborations to possibly be asking for things on that. At least that's why I was bringing it up in the SCOC. Thanks, Meg. Well, thank you again then everyone. This was very useful. Thank you for comments and you'll hear back from us no later than the end of the next week.